Volume of distribution is a weird concept, but once you get your head around it, it makes sense and it explains why different drugs behave in the way that they do. So volume of distribution is a theoretical volume. It doesn't actually exist. It's a theoretical volume that would explain the observed plasma concentration of a drug. I'll explain. If I have a container full of water and I say to you, I'm going to put a gram of salt into it, and then I'm going to let you test the concentration of that salt. You could work out the volume of the water based on the concentration. So if I put in a gram of salt and you test the concentration and it is one gram per liter of concentration, you can work out there must be a liter of water in there. The volume of distribution is a liter of water because that salt has equally distributed into a liter of water. That one liter of water is the volume required to explain the concentration we have observed. That's a really simple example and it makes total sense. It's different when we start adding fat into the equation. Now let's say I've got a vial of water and attached at the bottom is a little compartment full of oil. Doesn't matter what the volume is, but they're continuous with each other, they connect. If I take a very fat soluble drug and I drop it into the water, it's gonna mix around and distribute in the water, but a lot of it's gonna go and dissolve into the oil because it's what we call lipophilic or hydrophobic. It prefers to be in oil. Let's say I have 500 milliliters of water. It doesn't matter too much. And then I've got a little bit of oil. If I put a gram of this drug in, but the vast majority of it goes and sits in the oil, then the concentration in the water will be very low because there's not much drug left in the water. If I say to you, I've put a gram in, you test the concentration and tell me what the volume is. If you test the concentration and you get 0.2 grams per litre, your maths tells you, well, the volume should be 5 litres then, if it's giving me a concentration of 0.2 grams per litre. But actually what's happened is you've put a gram into 500 millilitres, but so much of it has disappeared out, the observed concentration is lower. That's the volume of distribution, is the theoretical volume that would explain the concentration seen. Now this is a useful number to know because it tells us about how the drug's gonna behave. If a drug has a very large volume of distribution, that usually means it's very fat soluble. So it's gonna distribute into fatty tissue. We see that with fentanyl and with propofol. But drugs that have a low volume of distribution stay confined to the plasma. We see that with things like rocuronium and gentamicin. Volume of distribution is also affected by protein binding. So if a drug is put into the plasma and lots of it sticks to proteins, that's a low volume of distribution. If your protein binding changes, so for example, you have low albumin, more of that drug's gonna be available. Your plasma concentration is gonna increase dramatically. Now the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that propofol is very highly protein bound, which would give it a very small volume of distribution. So how does that work out? So you're right, it is very highly protein bound. And this would give it a small volume of distribution if it weren't so lipophilic. It is very, very fat soluble and it is not very water soluble at all to the point where we have to give it as an emulsion. The reason it's opaque is it is a lipid emulsion in soybean oil. It's the only way we can feasibly get it into the vein is dissolved as an emulsion in a suspension of fat droplets. So it is so fat soluble that this completely overrides the protein binding and the resulting volume of distribution is very high. So why is this clinically relevant? Well, it affects how these drugs behave, particularly over a long period of time. So if you give a bolus dose of propofol, then you're gonna get a peak in your plasma concentration, and then it's gonna redistribute into the tissues, and then it's gonna have its large volume of distribution. And that's okay, the bit we're interested in is that initial plasma concentration to get someone to go to sleep. But if we're running an infusion, it's much more important as to how it redistributes through the body over a period of time. And when we look at our graph of how plasma concentration drops over time, you notice at the bottom in that third phase, the rate at which it's eliminated from the body decreases dramatically. The gradient gets much less steep. And that's because all the while your kidneys and your liver are churning through the drug to get rid of it, drug is being reintroduced to the plasma from the fat where it distributed to. Because you've stopped giving the drug, the plasma concentration drops but there's still lots of deposited drug in the fat stores, which then re-enters the plasma. So this is relevant because when the propofol's wearing off, when you've stopped giving it, if you've been giving it for a long time, you're gonna have a lot more of it built up into the system. And so that is gonna take a lot longer to wash out. Whereas drugs with a very low volume of distribution tend to wash out much more quickly. And this is what we call context sensitive 
half-time. Drugs that are very fat-soluble tend to have a larger context-sensitive half-time, which means they take much longer to wear off if you've been giving them for a long period of time. So things like remifentanil, small volume of distribution, wears off very, very quickly. But propofol and fentanyl take a very long time to wear off because they dissolve into the fat and they take a long time to leach back out and you end up giving yourself this auto-transfusion from the fat stores back into the plasma until those fat deposits of propofol or fentanyl have been used up.